Hello folks, this is Jamil Sweat for Gunstock Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the SIG Freedom Days. It's a gun festival. Yeah, <laughs> with the great Lena Mitrelek. And by the way, it's pronounced Mitrelek. It is. It, it is. is. It's a fact. Unless it's a fa you listen to Dad say it more than one time because he even says it different ways. Did you know that? Y yeah. He yeah. can't really. Just say it how you want. It's going to yeah. be okay. And I can tell you, I've known this young lady since she was, before she was born. Because uh, that's longer than I've known me. Yeah, no, because you were running around barefoot at the range in Quincy, Illinois. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you learned the to walk. The only thing that's changed is the Quincy, Illinois part. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, well, Quincy was Barry uh, Nationals. Uh, there's video footage of your mom shooting Nationals while pregnant with you. Mm -hmm. She won Nationals with four months pregnant with me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and and one story I have is when my wife was starting labor in 1994 for, with my daughter, I was watching that video on TV. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. Okay, Lena, you come from a long, big family of shooters. Mm -hmm. Your grandpa, mm -hmm. Jim Clark Sr., who was a gunsmith and a shooter. Yep. I had the pleasure of interviewing him for Gun Games Magazine in You Were Just Born. Mm -hmm. And your mom and dad, your mom champion shooter, your dad champion shooter, and there you are, a champion right now. Here I am. How many how many titles do you have right now? A bunch of them. I'm going to be honest, I had to look at the list of them just the other day, see how many nationals there were, and I got hired accountant, which is a fantastic problem to have. Well, yeah. But um, last of that I took count, it was over 127. Wow. Uh, major title wins, eight world titles, and then I didn't tally up all the nationals. And it depends on which nationals I decide to count, because there used to be a competition where I'd walk away with about three different national titles from team events, individual event, and then junior, and then ladies, so that's yeah. four. So, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just a number. But it was, a it has been a, a great career, and you have special, and specialized, I'll say, focus more on three gun, right? Um, for the first seven years of my career, uh, three gun is what made me fall in love with the shooting sports. Before then, I was unwilling to make the commitment that I knew it would take to be at a level that I could even think about doing this professionally. Then I found three gun and uh, the controlled chaos of it, the fact that it's a true juggling act, like you mm -hmm. cannot be a perfectionist, you just have to survive the best. Mm -hmm. uh, made me fall in love with it, so I did that for seven years, and then PCC, pistol caliber carbine, really came into USPSA, mm -hmm. and I shot the very first nationals, and I fell in love with that and was looking for a switch up, so really for the past three years I've specialized in PCC, and mm -hmm. hadn't shot a three-gun match for that entire time until about a month ago I went back decided mm -hmm. I was going to give myself 30 days to return to Three Gun Nationals mm -hmm. after not shooting for three years. And I was able to walk away with I, one of my most proudest achievements, which was the highest overall placement of a woman in multi-gun nationals That's history. Awesome. So that was, that was a really cool thing. And this fact that I only gave myself 30 days and just kind of the mental doubt that you go into it with that and from switching platforms to having not competed with a shotgun or a rifle or even a pistol in those that many years and just being like nope it's what I'm gonna do deep dive in and then did the best that I really have ever done. And other than competition what other interests do you have in the shooting industry? Um, I've been instructing a good bit um, that is going to be one of the biggest changes I've really gotten to a point kind of personally where I look out into the world and I see a lot of turmoil and I see a lot of people living in fear mm -hmm. and I, it rips me apart. Mm -hmm. And I have a very specific skill set and ability and I've really sat and tried to figure out how I can best use that to better the world and better individuals. And for me, that comes down to instructing, but not only that, because I have a very unique connection with companies. Mm -hmm. and with the consumer. So I'm really taking it on my behalf to start developing products, educational programs, and instructing for the people that are on the fence of shooting. Like, if you already own guns and you're a passionate gun lover, like, thank you, I appreciate you, but I want those people that are intimidated, those people that don't really understand, because the gun industry has a really bad uh, 
a bad stigma and also it's really bad about talking to people like they're already supposed to know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of unacceptable. So yeah. I'm ready to take a fresh look at it and do all that I can to help people find the confidence to defend and arm themselves. Well, that's excellent. And one thing that I have found is that we sometimes we are our own worst enemy mm -hmm. in the shooting industry that, like you say, we expect people to know what we know and we're not willing to say, hey, you know, and, and talk to people, not talk down to people. And it's just little things like, uh, like a slide, you know, like lock your slide back. And just, I don't know, we just throw out terms and other things that we just don't fully explain. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, there's a whole big old list of them that I'm trying to work on, but we just have to talk to people like, yeah, they're starting at the ground up. Like you would actually need to be talked to. Well, well like uh, you, when you and your dad came to Gunsight with Mossberg a few years back, mm -hmm. you were talking to a bunch of old farts. <laughs> but you weren't talking down to us. You described the way you shoot and the way to hold a shotgun and the way that I hold a shotgun. The way you hold a shotgun, but you, you yeah. help us but do things more efficiently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my hope is to always be able to share what I do, but most importantly, the reasoning behind it. Because if I, I first have to convince myself and prove to myself that every single technique and every single thing that I do is truly the best, and that's only through rigorous questioning. It's not like, I like to do this. No. No, like, and liking has nothing to do with it. Thinking that it's the right way has nothing to do with it. So being able to explain it and share it Yes. And then asking people to like shoot, hold, like shoot it down, like tell me why this doesn't make sense, so that I because if it doesn't make sense, I don't want to be using it. No, I want something better. Oh, and so. and well, everything you taught us at that one couple of days that we were there was really helpful well, to us because uh, yeah, I have shot shotgun before competitively, but I'm not good at it. I suck at it. But it was great to learn, and and we were, you know mature enough to say yes that young lady is mm -hmm. teaching us how to do things right mm -hmm. and i hope that you continue to do that with everybody all walks mm -hmm. of life i was telling uh, my cameraman dave back there earlier today that the shooting shooting as a sport and as a lifestyle transcends gender mm -hmm. sex race age is it should include all of us yeah, the ability to defend yourself is for everyone. Mm -hmm. And the more you value yourself, I've started really looking at it as like, I feel like our culture is very much so about self-care right now. Like meditation is really into it, journaling, going to the spa, getting your hair, like, and whatever it is, like self-care, people are all about self-care right now, being healthy, eating well, exercising. You can do all those things, but like for me, the biggest step you can take in self-care is protecting yourself mm -hmm. and it is intimidating and it's not easy like I've shot my entire life and when I turned 21 I was like all right cool concealed carry I'm just gonna take this gun that I know how to shoot every which way I'm gonna put it on my purse I'm gonna walk around no big deal finding gear that has worked for me and my lifestyle has been astoundingly hard which is why I'm also working with so many companies this year to try and make things that actually work and not only work but they're like are comfortable like geez there's some stupid uncomfortable things that they expect me to like wrap around myself that I don't even understand yep, so yep. Uh, yeah the end of this year there's a whole bunch on the docket that I just really can't wait that's going to be a huge shift in anything from anything that I've ever done before and I hope to make an impact not only in our industry but mainly outside of it inviting well, people in well thank you for everything you've done for the industry Thank you for what you have done for the shooting sports and for now sharing your knowledge to a brand new generation of shooters. I hope so. Thank you I very much, Lena. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. And guys, like always, please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.